Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Be Yourself. This is Dr. Ajneesh Sharma and today I am going to explain the questions of part B from CSIR JRF NET which was held on 19th, eh, sorry, 18th of June 2017. So first question is, this is a quite simple question and totally based on theory. I will discuss only those questions which really need explanation. As this is from the Krebs cycle and we know that in the Krebs cycle one molecule of GTP is produced. 3 molecule of NADH is produced and 1 molecule of FADH will to S2 will be produced. So the answer is number 3. Next question is denaturations of a highly helical protein having disulfide precious and 2 phenyl lines can be monitored as a function of temperature by which one of the following techniques. As this is the function of uh, of temperature, and we know that when we will vary the temperature, it will affect the uh, stability of our helical structures, or we can say that denaturation it will denature the protein. And uh, uh, disulfide phase is there. So if uh, these two condition is there, the disulfide bond is there, and it will break down with the increasing temperature. So if we can determine the sulfide or the SS content during the heating effect then we can easily calculate its denaturation effect with the temperature so the answer will be number three next question is glycerol is added to protein solutions to stabilize the preparations by actually what happened protein has some charges on itself so in a solutions what happened in the absence of glucose it will interact with each other and it will clump out or it will not be in the dissolved form in the solutions so when we will add glycerol to the solution what will happen it will form a, uh, a, a bridge around the protein molecules and this is known as preferential hydration of proteins and this will prevent to interact proteins with either, each other and in this way it kept the protein in the solution as uh, as in the dissolved form so the answer will be the preferential hydration of protein Next question is, protein stability is measured as folded or unfolded structures and KEQ is the equilibrium constant. And this is the equation which explains the how KEQ is, uh, is related with the del S, del S and del D. Prior to the development of sensitive calorimeters, thermodynamics parameters of processes was determined by the following equations okay this equation is used because in these equations what we can do we can plot a graph against the t and when we will plot a graph uh, ke and kt when plot a graph again ke and, and t the any slope it will give will be the uh, will be the value of minus del h r so from here from the by plotting a graph between log ke and uh, equilibrium and t we can uh, calculate the value of del h and del s so this uh, graph will be against the uh, so the uh, proper statement is that plotting keq against the temperature so the answer will be number four next question is retinol is an inhibitor of the electron transport chain the addition of retinol to the cell results in which of the following it is written that it is the electron transport chain so it will definitely block the atp and the mechanism by which it blocks the atp is by generating a reactive oxygen in mitochondria so the answer is number one metachromatic leukodystrophy is caused by deficiency of aryl sulfatase a and affect the cns mld is it is, it is actually a lysosomal storage disorders and it is listed in the family of leukodystrophies as well as among sphingolipidoses as it affects the sphingolipids metabolism. It is diagnosed uh, with the help of uh, MRI and it is included in an autosomal recessive. Not only MLD but some other diseases are also there which are due to or the disorders are there which is due to the uh, lysosomal storage disorders. These are the MLDs, Stysax, Fabris, Gossers, and Neyman Pick. Yes, the next question is which one of the following statement is not true? So the statement which is not true is 
the beta oxidation of long chain fatty acids occurs in mitochondria beta oxidation occurs in mitochondria but it doesn't oxidize the long chain fatty acid rather the short chain fatty acids are oxidized in mitochondria so the statement is uh, which is not true is the one as we will move to the next statement fatty acid biosynthesis occur in mitochondria yes fatty acid biosynthesis occur in mitochondria uh, peroxisomes especially the have one having the longer fatty acid chains so the one which is not so oxidized uh, uh, not um, be used for the long, uh, which uh, is the long chain it will be moved to the peroxisomes so the statement only not true is the beta oxidation next question is which one of the following pair is not matched correctly the uh, answer is fimbri for the motility it is little bit confusing because fimbri is the finger like projections which is present on the uh, on the ovary uh, attached to the ovary and uh, what is its functions the egg cells eggs will be passed to the uterus through the fimbri and it is confused that it is helping the motility because the fimbri itself is not acting as a motility rather the cilia on the surface of fimbri will uh, keep the propelling force to the uh, egg so that it can propel to the uterine tube next question is in eukaryotes precursors of uh, micro rnas or the miRNA and small interfering rnas are usually synthesized by these two are a class of messenger rna and we know that only rna polymerase 2 is there which can synthesize messenger rna in case of eukaryotes next question is amino acid tRNAs are escorted to the ribosomes by elongation factor in my uh, lecture in protein uh, synthesis or translations i have clearly explained that the, the elongation factor tu and ts are involved during the elongations and for the amino uh, for the escorting of the amino uh, escorting amino style tRNAs on the ribosomes especially elongation factor tu is uh, responsible which comes along with the gtp and when it get hydrolyzed to gtp it, uh, then TS will again exchange it with the GTP. So the answer will be elongation factor TU. So next question is scientists usually find difficulty and identifying the exact transcription termination site in eukaryotes because uh, this thing I also have discussed under microbiology section and uh, under the topic of RNA editing where I have uh, told that the uh, for the polyadenylations what happened the terminal site is uh, even replicated in, uh, sorry uh, transcript even encrypted even beyond the site where polyadenylation is to take place so uh, if we will have to identify the end of the or the terminals of the transcript then we should know the should have the sequence there but what happened just after the transcriptions it is spliced out and the pollinations take place there multiple a is added there so we are unable to get that the end point or the end of the transcript so it is little bit difficult to study the, the terminations the actual termination site for the transcriptions so the answer will be number two next questions this also i think i have discussed while i was explaining the questions from uh, june 2015 uh, in that in uh, in a chart also i have given that uh, uh, how many types of eukaryotic polymerase are there and what are their functions so i'm not going to discuss it again the answer will be number two where the poly alpha polymerase alpha is involved in the primer adding activity or the primase activity and the fen1 is used as the removal of primer next question is which one of the following is not a bacterial disease without any doubt it will be smallpox and the second messenger which opens calcium ion pores into plasma reticulum and plasma membrane is it is definitely anacetyl triphosphate which help in the transportation of calcium ion across its membrane next question is we following are the list of some proteins and this is the pcl2 family this both two are the uh, all are the bcl2 uh, family and uh, this is the apoptotic 
apoptotic family bcl apoptotic multidomain family bcl2 and bcl x2 uh, xl while backs and bad i have discussed about that uh, while I, I was explaining the uh, apoptosis that how backs and back arrange that as a form of oligomer uh, on the outer membrane of mitochondria and help in the release of cytochromes to the cytosols where it bind with the effector caspase and activate the initiator caspase which is pro caspase 3 so the only anti apoptotic which is not the anti apoptotic protein is the bax a as it will not uh, is it is not the anti apoptotic means it is not uh, it will help in the survival of the cell rather it will invite the apoptosis or it will lead to the death of the cells so the only uh, option is only D. Which one of the following cell generally does not secrete IF and gamma? I have listed some of the points here, but the answer I must tell you are the answer first. It will be T helper cell 2 cells. Uh, as uh, there are two response, one is during the immune response, natural killer cells will secrete out the IF and alpha, uh, sorry, gamma. And during the antigen specific immune response on that time with the help of CD4 anti helper cells and CD8 cytotoxicity T lymphocytes effector T cells will secrete out INF gamma and INF gamma IF and gamma is also produced by non toxic uh, cytotoxic innate lymphocyte also yes the next question is in what movement of an expanding outer layer is spreading over the internal surface during gastrulation is termed as all this word is little bit confusing so i am explaining all those things uh, invagination invagination is quite simple that it is just like the one uh, we will find on the small intestine that it will uh, it will uh, protrude out inside the, or it will uh, it will be invaginated inside toward the layer, the cells, and it will increase the surface area. So here the question is spread uh, the layer outer layer which is spreaded. So it is not the spreaded layer. Let it it is within the cells and uh, and it is uh, the cells which is folding inward. And the next figure is this, which is of the involutions. It, if you will see that the spreading over of the outer layer is spreading. The outer layer has spread it out, and now it is now folding from the inside to form a different layer. You can see here that the outer layer, which is shown by the blue, it is now protruded, and then it is folding inward. So the answer should be involution. Uh, Integrations we also sometimes uh, confuse with that. Ingressions better to remember it, yeah, uh, relate it with the progression. Uh, with the progression, what the progressions mean, it will progress towards the uh, towards a particular direction. It, uh, it is not the protruded one, rather, the cell will be, uh, be arranged in the layer by layer and it will progress towards the inside. And this is known as ingressions. Epiboly and evolution somewhat similar, but the thing is that the uh, layer was from the outside to it is bending towards the inside but a different layer is formed in the epipoly on the outer layer delamination is quite different as the different layer will start forming layer by layer as delamination itself the name indicates that delaminations the, the lamination will be again laminated by the different layer so the answer for this question is involutions Next question is the ability of cell to achieve their respective fats by interacting with other cell is known as the first option is autosomal. The name itself says it's a auto. Auto means self. It will self determines its respective fats and what it has to specialize into. But in the conditional specializations, it will uh, decide its fat with its nearby cells or from the external sources but especially with interacting with the nearby cells so the answer will be the conditional specifications next question is the dorsal most vestal cells of amphibian embryo that is capable of inducing the organizer is called as neocoop center and is marked as by the presence of it is actually marked the dorsal most one is marked with the help of beta catenin next question is which kind of cleavage is shown in mammals 
actually it is the holoplastic rotational cleavage i have listed some of the all the types of cleavage here you can better pause the video and make the note of it because uh, maximum of types of times such questions are asked and it is quite simple or it's totally based on memory no need to any concept test so next question is during embryo germination in the grass family uh, an absorptive organ that forms interface between the embryo and the starchy endosperm tissue is called it is actually known as scutellum as uh, you will see here in the seed this is the starchy endosperm or the nutritions which the seed get there uh, and this is the scutum which is the barrier between the endosperm and the embryo the following statements are made regarding the secondary metabolites of plants all all secondary metabolites are constitutively produced in all cells of a plant during its entire life as it is secondary metabolites with so the common sense it will not be constitutively produced in the cells during its entire life so the option a is wrong next is this serve as a signal to help the plant survive in adverse conditions yes it is involved in the adverse conditions like the terpenoids are there some uh, herbicide resistant plants also there which use the secondary metabolites for the survival in the adverse conditions as when the, we are using the herbicide against the plant it will be the adverse condition for them and they are the volatile in nature it's also true and they contribute to the flower color definitely contribute to the flower color and as it is also used as a resistance mechanism against certain uh, grazers also so the answer which is correct will be the b c and d question is which of the following of the plant hormone is not clearly visualizing so better better concentrate what i am uh, speaking for the questions for which one of the following part plant hormones biosynthetic pathway one amino cyclopropanone one amino cyclopropanone carboxylic acid is an intermediate so it's totally based on the uh, it's no need any explanation so uh, it is uh, it is during the ethylene biosynthesis next question is in a study it was found that potassium ion concentration in root cell of a pea plant was approximately 75 times greater than that of the nutrient media in which the plant was grown this indicated that potassium ions were absorbed from the media if this is a root and it is having a concentration of potassium ion very much high than its surrounding is it possible that the potassium ion will be absorbed here no it is not possible it will only be possible when we will apply an external force to pull push the potassium ion into the root or into the cell and this is known as the active as uh, uh, such type of transportation known as active transport which is associated with the energy de energy dependent process so the answer will be by an active energy dependent process Question number forty-five is also very simple. The filtration slits are formed by filtration slits, and the Bowman's capsule of uh, nephron is formed by podocytes. Next question: Which one of the following vitamin is not absorbed in the small intestine by any positive co-transporters? Uh, the answer will be for riboflavin. Next question. Which one of the following is not formed after post-translation processing of the proglucagon? We all know it is due to the beta lipotropin. Next question is which one of the following is the most powerful buffer system of blood? It's definitely bicarbonate. Why? Actually, buffer is a weak acid, generally having a weak acid with its conjugate base. so when uh, this uh, weak acid will split out it will give give one acid molecule and one the strong bases its conjugate bases so what will happen when we will add hydrogen ion to the solution then this hydrogen ion will react with this strong base and it will switch the reactions to backwardly by forming the ha compound by similarly when we will add ha to more to the solutions it will shift it towards the forward reaction by releasing a molecule of water in this likewise a bicarbonate can have a bidirectional reactions 
in which it can either break down into carbon dioxide and water and can also change into HCO3 and hydrogen ion. So when the as in the condition of acidosis or we can say when the pH of blood falls below 7.4 then in that case the hydrogen ion will be more there in the solutions and this will be picked up with the help of bicarbonate and it will then be a shift the reaction toward the backward process but when uh, during some metabolism uh, metabolic processes from some external source or from the lungs if we are inhale some more amount of carbon dioxide then it will switch the reactions by forming more and more hydrogen ions or it will switch the reaction toward the forward so in this way it balances the ph of the blood which is 7.4 next question is in drosophila melanogaster males homologous chromosomes pair and segregate during meiosis but crossing over does not occur at which stage of meiosis does segregation of two alleles of the gene take place in this individuals i have discussed that about the segregations and how segregation takes place during the cell cycle regulation and we know that the segregation of alleles takes place during the anaphase 1 so i am not going to discuss it again here if you want to know that you can directly visit to my channel and get that uh, topic of cell cycle regulations under the uh, subject cell biology next question is a recessive inheritance disease is expressed only in the individual of blood group o and not in not expressed in the blood groups a b and ab alleles controlling the g and the disease and blood groups are independently inheritance so there are two independent inheritance two independent allele will be there one will be for the disease and other will be for the blood group so a normal woman with the blood group a and her normal husband with the blood group b already had one child with the disease this statement that already had one child with the disease states that both woman and husband wife and husband are heterozygous in nature the woman is pregnant for the second time what will with the probability that the second child will also have the disease so it as it's a uh, um, uh, two different alleles are responsible for the disease and one for the blood group and we know that if we, it is saying that uh, mother is having blood group A then it can have either A uh, allele like this or it can have a uh, it's a multi allelic form so but as uh, here it is uh, said that its first child is uh, disease and the disease associated and only with the blood group o so it will be in the heterozygous form similarly as father will be also the heterozygous form so when we will cross it the i a of the female with i b or uh, the blood group b of his father what will the probability of getting blood group o then the probability of getting blood group o is i b it will give a a b again it will give uh, it's b uh, blood group b and blood group a and blood group o so what is the probability of probability of getting blood group o is 1 by 4th and now again it is saying that it is the uh, uh, yeah the disease again the next is it is uh, one probability we got for the blood group O and for the what will the probability of getting the disease as it is controlled by uh, all again it is a, will be heterozygous as the child is affected so mother and father will be heterozygous suppose it A A and we will cross with A A with small in the heterozygous allele we will get homozygous dominant A heterozygous form and again the recessive form so again the probability of getting a disease is 1 by 4 so the overall probability of getting the blood group o and the disease a will be 1 4 into 1 4 that is 1 by 16 so the answer will be 1 by 16 next question is a lack minus culture of equal levels mutagenized on one media on what media would one spread the mutagenized cell to select the lac positive cell we will definitely use the minimal media for that 
बिकॉज इफ यू यूज रिच मीडिया विद ग्लूकोज एंड वी वर एबल टू डिटेक्ट द लैक पॉजिटिव सेल्स बिकॉज द सेल विल स्टार्ट ग्रोइंग बाइटलाइजिंग ग्लूकोज एंड सेकेंड वी विल यूज द आई पी टी जी विच इज आइसो प्रोपाइल बीटा डी वन थायोग्लैक्टो पैनोसाइड सो एज इट मे मेक द एलो लैक्टोज एंड इट इज अ गुड सोर्स फॉर द एक्टिवेशन ऑफ द लैक ऑपरॉन and we will use again use the x curl because we, it will be easier for us to pick out the colony with the with the help of its difference in color which is the blue and uh, white colonies so we will use the option number 3 to select the lac positive cell next for the cladistic taxonomy archosaurus are a group of dipsid amniotes which includes extinct dinosaurs the living representatives of the group includes it is definitely apes and crocodilia which is with uh, which is the modern bird and crocodile next question is also very interesting if you want to uh, divide a human body into dorsal and ventral sections or we can say the uh, belly and back section what planes will you use there are three planes of how we divide our human body one is the coronal which we divide for the dorsal and ventral part sagittal plane which we divide likewise in the left and right form and transfer it's quite easy to understand as it will directly uh, up and lower, upper and lower part divide our body into upper and lower part so it definitely the answer will be the coronal next question is Which one of the following bryophytes has multicellular rhizoids and its cells mostly contain numerous chloroplast? The only one here which is multicellular rhizoids is the is Phagnum. Others are the unicellular rhizoids. Next question is which one of the following is not the true for Amnon bacteria? Amnon is actually uh, uh, having abbreviations. Amnon stands for anaerobic ammonium oxidation. so its basic function is it uh, help in the purifications of waste water and it convert the ammonium into dinitrogen it carry out its reaction two stages one it convert first in first stage it convert ammonium into nitrate and half of the ammonium into nitrate and all the rest of the half ammonium it utilize in the second step and then it will again uh, it will uh, combine with the nitrate and then it will oxidize into dinitrogen so it doesn't convert uh, nitrate and ammonium both if it if you will get the raw nitrate into the solution it will not convert it rather once it will act on the ammonium and as a by product of uh, ammonium the nitrate it will uh, combine with the ammonium and then again it will be in the second stage it will break down it into dinitrogen so uh, this question is, is confusing it was confusing because of the statement where nitrate is used so the statement which is not true here is number 1 and because of this reason it is also uh, helping the is sponsor for the 50% of of uh, clearance of water in the ocean and it belongs to the bacterium phylum planktomyces it's also true membrane of this bacteria contains ladder and lipids it's also true Next question is to understand the pre-predator relationships. DNA, which was a predator, and Paramecium, which is a prey, were in, were used. Paramecium population was grown with the sand sediment as hidden places or refuse. To this population, DNA was introduced only once. What would happen to the prey populations in the course of time? So, uh, what will happen when it will introduced once? But that on that time, DNA will uh, will uh, uh, will feed on prey as uh, much as possible. So it the what will happen to the prey population? It will first decrease to very to very lower uh, amount when the DNA get stabilized, and then again when uh, as it is introducing only once. so there will be not the further increase in the dinium so after a certain uh, limit of time paramecium amount will start increasing and then it will stabilize with respect to that of the population of dinium so the answer will be number 3 next question is which of the following is not correct the first statement is 
Island ecosystem are less prone to biological invasion because they are distant from mainland. It's obviously it will be more distance. It will be difficult for the uh, for the species to migrate from a mainland to island. Next statement is invasive species have greater phenotypic plasticity compared to native species. Obviously, if it is changing the environment and again it is adapting there, then it must have the higher plasticity. Next is Invasive species have higher high dispersal ability because the uh, area will be larger for the invasive species and resources will also be uh, newer and the larger for them. So it will have the higher dispersal ability in comparison to the native one. Now, next is at a higher scale at a large scale diversity rich ecosystem are generally more prone to invasion. It is not that uh, at a large scale diversity rich ecosystem when the ecosystem has more diversity then will and then there will be also the diversity in their climate and also the niche form so it will be easier to uh, easier it's not easier for the invasive to adapt in each and every frequent changing environment so the answer will be number four next question is which of the following is the correct decreasing order for the major reservoirs of carbon on earth so here the answer is number four because uh, large lag sediments are there which uh, uh, which may include the coral reefs also which is also a form of carbon dioxide or uh, calcium uh, basically they are the uh, calcium carbonate are there and these are the sediments which is formed which uh, they uh, grab the carbon dioxide from their layer and then utilize it in their process and then uh, these are the waste materials which are deposited at the lag sediments then it comes the terrestrial soil atmospheric carbon dioxide and the terrestrial vegetation next question is in an experiment to determine the number of rats in a field 80 rats were initially captured marked and released after one month 100 rats were recaptured and in the same field of which 20 were previously marked one based on the above observation estimate population size of the red in the field will be it's quite simple because there is a formula here how we calculate the population size here is that n1 into n2 by n3 what is n1 here n1 is the first time initially captured rat which is the 80 which the initially captured rat was 80 and n2 is the one which was re uh, captured after one month which is 100 and sorry which is 100 and and 3 and 3 is the one uh, during our next time when we captured and uh, captured the next time which was a hundred uh, number of uh, rats in this in that time how many of the rat we found which was marked so the marked uh, was found was 20 so it will be 20 and this will give you 400 so the answer is number 3 next question is a species of grass grown around a mine area having patches of heavy metals contaminated soil it means the one area is which is there is having a another area nearby it's a different niche okay some of the populations of species grew selectively on the soil that was contaminated with the heavy metals. Over a period of time, though, the tolerance and non-tolerant grass population were continu uh, continuously distributed and most separated by and uh, not separated by geographical barrier. They eventually evolved different flowering time and become different species. What kind of speciation would you call this? So the uh, species of the grass which are grown uh, around the mine area which was uh, growing around the uh, or we can say from the different niche has migrated to the different niche there. So here we have the four three types of spe uh, specialization term is there allopatric, sympatric, parapatric and bottleneck. So let's discuss these three one by one. What allopatric means if this is a particular niche and uh, if there comes a barrier, then it will lead to different in the speciation. After uh, this, will lead the isolation of that species. 
and there is a definite barrier there. And next is the St. Patrick speciation. What happened in St. Patrick speciation? Within, uh, within that niche, a different uh, species develop and have a definite boundary. And here the point is that no, uh, def not separated by a geographical barrier. So it cannot be also there. And in this, due to the genetic polymorphism, new species develop within the population. In Parapatric, what happened? We are having a species from the outside of another race and it will migrate to uh, the, the to different niche and after that it will be uh, it, uh, it will be sorry it will be distributed uh, in the different niche here and there will be no part no any uh, separation boundary will be there it will be distributed there in different niche so the answer will be para Patrick new uh, next question is what what do mayflies pacific salmon and annual grain crops have have in common all are samal parrots which means they have single uh, reproductive age during their whole life next question is also quite simple the correct order of triads from paleozoic to mesozoic era is it's the option number three next question is Fluke tails is the uh, mainland Asia show high variation in the tail color. However, in the far out Pacific island, the fluff the flow, uh, the flow, uh, flow tail shown very little variation in tail color. These variations in tail color can be explained by all of the following ex except the variations can be introduced in any population with the help of wondrous effect, genetic drift and the frequency dependent selections. Whereas option 2 which is the homologous evolution uh, it is the evolutionary pattern where it has developed a similar pattern of evolution with, from a uh, common ancestor having a similar structure. So uh, the answer which is not will lead to the very uh, is not favoring the Favoring the hair statement is the answer number two. Next question: A genotransgenic transgenic plant containing a transgenic for the hybrid resistance shown two bands, two bands in the southern blot is analysis using a probe that is internal to the restriction site used for genomic DNA digestion. However, it segregates in the three is to one ratio for the uh, herbicide resistance sensitive Her herbicide resistance is too sensitive means three is the herbicide resistance and one is the sensitive one which is will be the recessive one in the t1 progeny obtained by self pollination which one of the following statement is correct first is the t not plant is single copy it cannot be have a single copy because here we are getting two bands from the southern blotting so it is the wrong statement Next is the T0 plant is a double copy, it's true, event and two transgenic copies are tightly linked. If it would be tightly linked, then we will be getting 1 is to 1 ratio. Okay, next is that the T0 plant is double copy, event and the two transgenic copies are integrated in two different chromosomes it definitely it is integrated into two different and two different chromosomes then it is only obeying the mandel's law which is 3 to 1 next question is which one of the following statement regarding crop improvement person is using a molecular breeding approaches is incorrect first is allelic diversity for traits of interest should have the very uh, uh, should be available in the naturally uh, obviously if diversity will not be there then how we will approach for regarding the improvement program if there will be uh, the similar types of allele will be there next is the genes of interest cannot be derived from a sexually incompatible organism uh, if it will be sexually incompatible then we will not able to cross them so the answer is also a uh, statement is also right Availability of marker and linkage map should facilitate the breeding program. Obviously, the linkage map will also uh, will uh, interfere with the breeding program. Next is the crop plant should necessarily have an optimized dropper system for production of uh, double haploids. It should it is not the condition for uh, to have in a improvement program. So the answer will be number four. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज मैम्रेन पोटेंशियल इन मैटोकॉन्ड्रिया इज क्रिटिकल फॉर ऑक्सीडेटिव फॉस्टोलाइजेशन एंड इज मॉनिटर बाय वी मॉनिटर द मैम्रेन पोटेंशियल विद द हेल्प ऑफ पैच क्लैम्पिंग टेक्निक वेर वी यूज माइक्रोपिप माइक्रोपिपेट टू पिंच आउट द मैम्रेन अ वेरी स्मॉल पोर्शन ऑफ मैम्रेन कंटेनिंग द सोडियम पोटेशियम पंप और द चैनल्स नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन The pH of the solution is 7.4 plus minus 0.02. Where 0.02 is, is the standard deviation obtained from eight measurement. If more measurements were carried out and percentage of sample whose pH would fall between pH 7.38 and 7.42 is, it's quite simple. Because what happens for normal distributions having a mean m and a standard deviation s. we have three statements here one is that approximately 68% of the population lies within plus minus 1 s of the mean second is that 95% of the population values lies within plus minus 2 s of the mean <coughs> and approximately 99.7% of the population values lies within plus minus 3 s of the mean what does it means it that uh, here we have the error copy of plus minus 1 into the standard deviation so as uh, the state, uh, statement is that uh, yeah, the ps would lies in between the 1 into standard deviation which is 0.02 to 0.02 common so the uh, the approximate population should be 68% if it would be uh, two times to that of the popular of uh, the standard deviation then it will be 95% and similarly if it would be 3s yes, then it would be 99.7% in order to separate red and white blood cells which one of the following method can be used definitely we will use the density gradient centrifugation because the red blood cells and white blood cells basically different in their nucleus content as the rna uh, sorry uh, rbcs doesn't contain nucleus whereas wbc is contain nucleus so it's uh, will definitely differ in the density so we will use the density gradient centrifugation next question which one of the following modifications of protein is co translation the only modification is the meristoylation next question or the last question of this uh, part part b is in order to check whether a protein has been phosphorylated during the treatment with a drug you would prefer we will definitely use the western blot analysis last time also in 2016 december uh, question was there from western blotting so i think I, always you will find that the questions are repeating on the same pattern so it is quite easy for you if you will uh, revise all the past questions there so what the actually uh, happened with the western blot analysis when we will uh, separate the uh, proteins and we will use sts for the uh, for uh, protein then we will have a different band and the band which is phosphorylated we can analyze them by and uh, by tagging with a certain antibiotics so uh, what we will first do it we will transfer it to a natrocellular membrane by applying a different in there uh, in the electric field uh, so when it get transferred to the natrocellular membrane then we will apply Uh, antibody against the phosphorylated uh, strand of the protein so the one having the phosphorylated band it will bind to the antibody and antibodies and the one which is not bound it will be washed out so we will wash out the excess of the antibody then we will use the secondary antibody against this antibody which will then it will bind with the primary antibody and the secondary antibody we will use here we will either use some uh, color uh, substance conjugated with the antibody or we will use some fluorescence compound so when this uh, when we will wash out the excess of the secondary antibody the only band which will have been interacted with the antibody will give some colored band if it we tag the or conjugated the antibody with the colored uh, compound or it can give the fluorescence uh, band if you have tagged with it uh, tag the secondary antibody with any of the fluorescent compound so this was all in this video about the explanations in part b 
and I'm not expert in all the subjects so I can be wrong somewhere so if uh, you found anywhere uh, wrong in my explanations then do comment me on my channel be yourself and I'm going to upload explanation for part C so don't forget to subscribe and share on my channel be yourself and specifically click on the bell straight forward to the subscription button so that you can get the notification